Hi, my name is Kylie, and in this video, I would like to show you how to trigger four 34401A DMMs in BenchView by creating a simple sequence using TestFlow and Command Expert. Because so many 34401s are used worldwide, we want to show you how to get the best performance possible from the instrument. We do want to let you know that these 34401As will be discontinued December 1st, 2016. It will still be fully supported for five more years, but it may be a good time to consider upgrading to the new TrueVolt DMM. Since the 34401A has been around since 1992, there are a few challenges that must be overcome to program this instrument. First of all, once the 34401A is set up to take measurements, no further commands can be processed until it is done, including commands that would tell you when the readings are done. Secondly, the internal memory can only store up to 512 readings. And third, when the init command is sent to the instrument, it can take time to process that before external triggers can be started. First, the instruments have to be connected. As seen here, the four DMMs must be connected in parallel to the function generator. These red arrows show the cable connections on the rear panel. The function generator will then be set up to generate 512 TTL trigger pulses with 10 microsecond pulse width at a frequency of up to 1 kHz, which is the maximum sample rate of the 34401A. Once this is set up, you can open BenchView to begin creating the test flow sequence. After opening BenchView, you should see your connected instruments here in the bottom left corner. Next, you want to open TestFlow, which is where we can make our sequence. We want to add a Command Expert block, so we will go into More Blocks, under Advanced, and you can click Command Expert to drag over. This allows you to import a sequence from Command Expert that will then run inside TestFlow. To open Command Expert, click this button here, which will direct you to a new Command Expert window. The first step in Command Expert is to make sure that your instruments go from My Instruments to Active Instruments. To do this, first click on the first DMM you have, identify your instrument, and click Connect. This will not only connect it, but it will also add it to your sequence. Continue and do this for every other instrument that you have. Once all your instruments are connected, including your function generator, you can now click on the instrument under Active Instruments to see a list under Command Search of all the available command options. In this sequence, we need to first initiate each DMM before we can trigger the function generator to send a signal to it. We also need to make sure to use an error query to prevent Command Expert from sending syst error queries to the DMM after every DMM command. This is because once the init command is sent to the DMM, nothing else can be sent, including a syst error query. To do this, we first need to add an error query behavior command to the sequence, which must be set to none. Set value, and this adds the step to the sequence. There are many additional commands that need to be added to this sequence for it to work properly, as seen here. This shows the necessary commands for the first DMM, which will then be repeated for all four DMMs. In this sequence, the first line performs an IEEE 488.3 style clear on the DMM. This resets the instrument to idle, so that if the instrument was somehow already in the wait for trigger state, it would get cleared and be ready for new programming. Then, the star CLS command is used to clear the error buffer so there isn't any confusion about new errors that might occur. Next, the send zero auto off command is used to disable the auto zero, which will help the DMM run as fast as possible. To configure the DMM, the configure voltage DC 10 max command is used to set the DMM to DC voltage measurements and set the range to 10 volts. This also sets the resolution to be the highest range. Next, the trigger source external command is added to tell the DMM that the trigger will come from a hardware trigger from the rear panel terminal, which is how we will have the instruments connected. We will then use the trigger count 512 to set the number of triggers the DMM will accept before it returns to the idle state. To have the DMMs run as fast as possible, the trigger delay is set to zero 
and the front panel display is set to off, as seen in these two commands. Lastly, the init command is used to change the state of the DMM from idle to wait for trigger. This completes the sequence for the first DMM, and it is repeated for each of the remaining three DMMs to configure and initiate them as well. Once everything has been repeated for each DMM, set a trigger delay for the function generator to allow the last init command to complete before the trigger command is run. Make sure it is under your function generator. Trigger delay. And you can set this as a local variable for both trig and seconds. And we are going to set the trigger number to 1 and the delay to 0 0.05 seconds. Now we want to add this step and it adds it to our sequence. Next, we can finally trigger the function generator, which is going to be the trig function, star trg, and you can add this step to the sequence. Next, we want to set the default timeout for the first DMM. This is needed to give the instruments time to do all their readings before fetching the data. Under transport, select default timeout and we want to set the value to 20,000 milliseconds, which should give enough time for the readings to complete. This is also going to be a local variable. Set value. Now we want to add a fetch for every DMM that we have, so it will collect the measurements from the DMMs. So we want to query fetch, which we'll find here. Select the parameter as reading one, since we need a reading for each DMM, and add this step. Repeat this for each DMM. Now your entire sequence is set up, and before exporting it into TestFlow, click the play button to make sure that your sequence works. If you get all green check marks, that means your sequence has successfully completed, and now we can export this to our add-on inside TestFlow. Here you will see that the output parameters are shown as reading 1, reading 2, reading 3, and reading 4. To collect this data into TestFlow, click on More Blocks, and under Variables, we will create four variables. We'll do reading 1, click OK, and this you can click and drag into reading 1 as shown. Also repeat this for each of the four readings. Now that all four readings are set up to be outputs, you can close more blocks and your test flow sequence is almost ready to run. We can also go under advanced to find export data, which will export the data as soon as your sequence is complete. And now we can run our sequence in test flow. Now it automatically brings up where your exported data is. From here, you can open any of the Excel sheets containing the data from each individual reading, or you can open the overall data file, which has links to each command expert reading inside. In BenchView, you can also look under results to find all the trace graphs for each reading. So now you can see how easy it is to use both command expert and test flow to create personalized test sequences. I hope you found this video helpful, and thanks for watching.